Hi everybody and welcome to the season 2 finale of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. So what movie are we doing this week? Well, let's put our hands on our chins and look up at the ceiling to find out. American Mary. That's right everybody, the very anticipated American Mary. As I've mentioned many times in the past, I'm not one to pre-order movies. Well, I guess I am. Because this came in the mail and I was like, what in the hell could that be? Turns out it's American Mary. This is the latest movie from the Sasuke twins. They're the girls who made Dead Hooker in a Trunk. I've learned since the unboxing that it's not Soska, it's Sasuke with an H sound. Kind of like Fems de Sod. Soska. The Soska sisters are really making a name for themselves. They are just rising up pretty drastically in the cult movie world. Something neat about these girls is not only do they direct their movies, but they also write them. Amazing, extraordinary, Catherine Isabel is awesome. Clive Barker. To Catherine Isabel, that must be her. I'm wondering if the Soska sisters are even in this. Oh yes, they're in it all right. I can't wait to find out. It also says on the box that this movie is the most startling and original film of the year. So with that said, you guys ready to start this? I know I was. All right, the disc is in the PlayStation pouch. Let's do this. Play movie. So American Mary begins with all these nasty close-ups of a scalpel going into some nasty fucking shit. And then some fingers just spread the nasty shit open the way you would a vagina if you're a female masturbating on camera. I thought for sure that this was autopsy footage, but in a creative twist, the camera pulls back and we see, oh, it's a chicken. So American Mary is about a girl named Mary who's a med student studying to become a surgeon. Her professor, Dr. Grant, is a real asshole. This teacher is a pretentious fuck. And that is to quote Martin Tupper. It turns out that Mary is totally broke. She can't even pay her cell phone bill. So she gets onto a Craigslist type site and she finds an ad that's willing to pay $1,000 for a personal masseuse at a strip club. No sex. So she goes to the club to audition for the job. The manager, Billy, tells her that he needs to see her body before hiring her. So she takes off her coat to reveal what she's wearing underneath. She's dressed in whore gear. She's a slutty surgeon. Now he's making her give him a massage. She's looking like, I can't believe this guy. Then this heavy set guy named Lance bursts in and he says, Billy, we got a problem. And Billy and Lance run out. Well, Billy returns to the room where Mary is and he says, hey, how would you like to make $5,000? This is an offer Mary can't refuse. So the two of them go into a back room where they see there's a guy. He's in his underwear, he's laying on the slab, his eyeballs poked out, there's a slash going down his chest. And he's going <laughs> Billy says to Mary, he's already drugged up so you can just start hacking away. Then it cuts to Mary coming home to her apartment, so we don't see what she did. She looks traumatized. The next day, Mary gets a phone call from this really strange woman with an extremely high-pitched voice. The woman says, Is this Dr. Mason? And Mary says, No, sorry, wrong number. The next day, her buzzer rings. Yes? Uh, uh, package, Mary Mason? Hi, Mary Mason. I need to sign for a package. Fine, 211. Wouldn't you recognize the voice? I need to talk to Mary Mason. Mary goes into her bathroom real quick and behind her we see this woman walking in. Mary hears something and she grabs a baseball bat. You can put the bat down, Dr. Mason. I'm completely homeless. My name is Beatrice Johnson. We spoke earlier. Her face is so terrifying that it puts Gus Pratt's to shame. This woman is fucking weird looking. She's had tons of surgeries in order to look just like Betty Boop. <laughs> Betty Boop. So Betty Boop heard about Mary through Billy, the club owner. Betty Boop asked Mary to perform an unconventional surgery on her best friend, Ruby. How unconventional? She just wants some skin removed for um, cosmetic reasons. My niece, she's a receptionist at a veterinary clinic. We can use the operating room after hours. 
Betty Boop, a.k.a. Beatrice, tells Mary that she'll pay her $10,000 for the surgery. Mary says, let's do it. She's going to remove somebody's skin. That night, Mary goes to the vet clinic and she runs into Betty Boop. Wow, this Betty Boop character is just wonderful. So weird. Thank you for coming, Dr. Mason. She sounds like Audrey from Little Shop when she says, I know. Mary goes into the other room where she sees Ruby waiting for her. This woman was fucking terrifying as well. Uh, oh my god, this girl's fucked up looking too. Okay. Like scary, you know? Like if you were tripping and be like, uh, There is nothing scarier than a fucked up looking face when you're tripping. Just check this out. He is so scary. His face is scary. Oh, he can make scary faces. He's so frightening that I can't breathe. I mean, that's the scariest devil I've ever seen. Why don't people talk about him? Who is he? He is fucking scary as shit. He looks like a caveman. What the fuck is happening? Oh my god, his face looks terrifying there. He's so scary. He's so scary. He's so fucking scary. He is scary. He's very scary. I have to believe him. That man's scary. Oh my god. That was a fun night. Anyway, Ruby tells Mary that she wants to be desexualized completely, and she asks her to take this off and seal up this as much as possible. Desperate for money, Mary says, okay. It's like the beginning, except this time it's a woman's tits instead of a turkey. She just put a blue sheet over the tit with a hole in it. She took the scalpel down and is running it along the lines, the dotted lines. She's cutting her nipple off. And she completely took the nipple off. Milk spot and areola. And there's this nice music playing. She's wearing some terrific high heels. I love her shoes on the cover. After surgically removing this woman's nipples and making her pussy look like a third ass cheek, Betty Boop says, we're gonna post these pictures on our website, but what should we call you? And Mary says, oh, just make something up. A few days later, Mary checks out the website to see the pictures of Ruby. Oh, there she is with her nipples removed. Pictures of her big tits with no nipples. She then clicks on a link and it takes her to a website called abstract.me. This is the number one site on the internet for mods, showcasing brand new trends in body modification. And now she's looking at pictures with just people with big holes in their skin and things under their skin to make them look like triceratopses. Later that night, Mary attends a party thrown by Dr. Grant. There's a whole bunch of surgeons there, and one of them introduces himself as... I'm a fucking motherfucker. <laughs> A surgeon gives Mary a drink and she becomes immediately dizzy. They drugged her. He takes her into a bedroom, throws her down on the bed, she's laying on her back, her head is hanging backwards, and he starts to rape her. He's videotaping her. We're seeing through the lens of the camera. He's fucking her, like this. But she's flipped over, I guess. This is what's happening to her. The next morning, Mary goes directly to the strip club and asks Billy if he wants to make $5,000. She says, all you gotta do is kidnap Dr. Grant, then drop him off at my house. As soon as they do that, Mary says, I won't be done till tomorrow night. We then see the condition that Dr. Grant is in. Well, he's got this weird thing in his mouth that's pulling his mouth open and his head is strapped down to the table. She's taking a needle. And she's sticking it into the side of his face. She then goes on to tell him about body modification and how she's going to use his body to practice the most popular procedures. Implants. Tongue splitting. Sometimes. Implants. Genital modification. She's going to try them all out on him. Voluntary amputation. We have at least 14 hours of surgery ahead of us. She gives the guy a good tongue splitting, and then it cuts to a few days later where we see Mary is running a successful body modification parlor out of her apartment. I love her. This movie is really good. 
Her and Betty Boop go out for coffee and Betty says, Get this, Mary. The creators of Abstract.me are going to be in town for one week and they want you to do some work on them. It then cuts to the two webmasters getting out of their car and walking into the strip joint. And I think that's the Soska sisters walking in. That's them all right, and holy fucking shit do they look creepy in this. They're holding hands, they're just kind of gliding about, and their backs are stitched up like lace. Black lace strung through hoops on their back to make it look like they're wearing a corset. But it's, you know, through the skin. They sit down at a booth and Mary joins them. They tell her that they found Mary through Ruby's website. Your work is easily accessible online. You might say you're somewhat of a celebrity. They say that after their surgery and they post the pics of the operation that everybody's going to want to know who she is. So they suggest that she make her own website. They are something else to look at. Who does she remind me of? The one on the left. Annie Lennox. I didn't want to turn the camera during this part because I want you guys to see for yourself just how scary these girls look. She looks like Annie Lennox. Finally, they tell Mary what they want to have done. We want you to take off our left arms and exchange them with one another. And Mary says, she said, that shouldn't be a problem. Mary says, how's Friday? And then at the same time, the sisters smile these demonic looking grins of madness. They are scary. We go into the operating room and Mary begins the surgery. Everything Mary wears while operating is like a sexy surgeon outfit. Skin tight, black, and always complemented with some extremely high stiletto heels that are bigger than the average human penis. She just turned on the music and put her mask up. She got the little buzz saw thing. She hacked off the arm. When the surgery is complete, Mary goes to this big warehouse, flips on the lights, and we see that there's someone in there. And there's a guy without any arms or legs hanging from the ceiling, threw the skin on his back. The word liar burned into his forehead, huge hoops put into his earlobes, covered in piercings, and he just looks like shit. This is Dr. Grant, the guy who raped her, who is now her guinea pig for experimental procedures. Oh, what's that? I couldn't hear you because your mouth is so shut. We're just gonna take a few pictures of you today for my website. While verbally scaring the hell out of Dr. Grant, some security guard comes out of nowhere and... Oh shit, she just turned around and a cop punched her in the face. The security guard is all freaked out when he sees Dr. Grant hanging there, arm and legless. He says, don't worry, we're gonna get you down, and he starts unchaining him. Then Mary? Mary just stabbed him in the leg. Now she's hacking away at him with this big weird saw. Really letting him have it. Then we see Ruby in her bedroom admiring her plastic body in the mirror. There's that weird woman who got her nips removed. Ruby's husband walks in and she turns around at him and she takes off her robe and it went down to show her pussy and it was just, it was just skin. The husband just looks down in shock and Ruby stares into his eyes and her face is scarier than ever, making these horrifying looking faces into his eyes. She's scary. It then cuts back to Mary's apartment where she's doing all these surgeries and we see the aftermath of something she did to some guy's dick. Oh my god. It was a dick and it was all sliced up. It looked like a hot dog that had been in the microwave for over three minutes. You know how they split? That was that guy's dick. We then see Billy watching the surveillance video of when Mary auditioned for the job walking around in her horror gear. So he's got all sorts of videos of her in his wax stack. Once home, she gets a phone call from Betty Boop, who is crying so hard that Mary can't understand her. She's all beat up and there's blood all over her. She says that Ruby's husband was so mad about the surgery that he went over to her house and forced her to tell him who did the surgery. And then... What? And, not, and somebody behind Mary in a hood stabbed her. I wasn't sure who stabbed her at first. All I knew is that he looked like... Who is it? Who is it? Christopher Titus? Remember that show Titus? God, I hated that show. 
So Mary has been stabbed badly. She's opening up the door and she's crawling out. She makes it over to her operating table, tips the tray down, and begins to suture up her own stomach. Staring up at the ceiling in pain, stitching up this nasty looking wound on her stomach. Her boobs look huge, covered in his blood. Some cops and detectives show up at Mary's apartment and we see that her surgery was unsuccessful. She died. So he killed her because she did that surgery? Did she sew her ass shut too? We get a beautiful shot of her laying dead in a puddle of blood. The camera went all the way up and you can see her whole body in white stilettos and blood all over. In black. So that was American Mary. So what do I give American Mary on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a five. It was so good. I recommend it to each and every single one of you. Order it right now. This is a must-see movie for fans of extreme horror, crazy-looking faces, outrageously sexy surgeon outfits, and Betty Boop. That was very, very good. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all next season.